let me tell you about how I got here. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. A little bit closer? Ah, uh, perfect. I need to take you back to where it all first began. I'm from Fresno, California, and I grew up working with my papa on his ranch in Crothers, California. This is where I had my very first garden and had my first experience with gophers. Very first memory of vertebrate pest management was of my papa sticking a water hose into a gopher burrow hole and basically drowning it. But now I know that there are many other ways to go about gopher management and we're going to talk about them today. Five species of gophers in California, but we are going to be focusing on the Bata Puck gopher, which is the most widespread. Gophers are rodents, so they are in the order Rodentia and in the family Geomyidae. This is a map that describes the distribution of pocket gophers in California. They occupy almost all of California, much of the west, and they are only limited by major rivers, deserts, or really rocky terrain. The average pocket gopher ranges between 6 and 10 inches long, and an anatomical feature that they have is fur-lined cheek pockets, as you can see in the photo to the right. Those cheek pockets are used for storing food, basically just anything that they find foraging underground in their tunnel system. You could see in the picture, this little guy has some grass stored for later. Gophers are very well equipped to their environment. They have really strong forelimbs with claws that help them to dig and tunnel through their burrow system. They have very small eyes and ears, and they have very fine and short fur that is well adapted for them to live in wet soil. So this means when they are crawling around in their tunnels, their fur does not get caked with mud. The photo to the right is a picture that I took of a trapped gopher, and it's there to show the extent of their front teeth. So a pocket gopher's front teeth actually go through their lip, and it's there to help them dig through the soil and to not eat dirt. So since pocket gophers spend a lot of their time underground in their burrow system, it is dark down there, so they need something besides just their eyes and ears to let them know their surroundings. So pocket gophers have sensitive whiskers, as you can see in the picture to the left, and the photo to the right, in the circle, you could see the gopher's tail. They have a short tail that is really sensitive and gives them a better idea of what's around them. The beginning of a gopher's life is different than many other mammals that there are. They have a three-year lifespan and they produce three to five litters per year. And in each litter, there ranges between two and 10 young. There is an 18-day gestation period and the baby gophers are weaned with their mother's milk for five to eight weeks. And after that, they're cut off. Their mother drives them off and they have to find their own tunnels and their own burrow system to live their life in solidarity. Gophers do not hibernate and in every burrow system there will only be one gopher so they are solitary creatures. They are territorial by nature and they are only together when they breed. Pocket gophers are strict herbivores and they graze at night, so they are nocturnal grazers. They mostly forage and feed on forbs, shrubs, and grasses. A pocket gopher's habitat is a burrow system underground, and it consists of many tunnels with many openings above ground, along with rooms that are in different parts of the burrow system, for example, a nesting area where they would sleep, a feeding area, and even an area for them to use the bathroom. A burrow system for one singular gopher can cover an area from 200 to 2,000 square feet. The burrows are about two to three inches in diameter, 
and the main burrow could be a range from 6 to 12 inches below the ground. This is a photo I took of a gopher mound that I found in San Luis Obispo. We are able to differentiate this tunnel system between any other tunneling rodent because of the crescent shape that is left behind when a gopher digs its pop-up tunnels. By looking at a gopher mound, you are able to tell the direction that the tunnel runs in based off of the way that the crescent curves around the top of the mound. Like in this picture, the crescent curves around the top right of the mound, so that means that the tunnel would follow the arrow pointing downwards into the ground to the left. Signs that you have gopher activity are mounds popping up around in gardens, lawns, fields, and agricultural areas. Just from the sheer mass of square footage that one gopher burrow system can cover, with many mounds popping up and multiplying, it could be imagined how much detriment can be done to a cropping system, garden, or even a backyard. The specifics of gopher damage besides just loss of beautification to a landscape is gnawing on utility cables, irrigation pipes, loss of overhead irrigation, and loss of rangeland quality. A study was conducted and concluded that Bada's pocket gophers at a density of around 32 per acre decreased the forage yield by 25% on foothill rangelands in California. The legal status of pocket gophers by the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, the Fish and Game Code classifies pocket gophers as non-game mammals, which means that they could be taken at any time and in any legal manner. A trapping license is not required for gopher removal, and that is just one of the ways to go about gopher management. Trapping is a good management strategy when you have a low density of gophers. This trap is called the cinch trap, and I have it set here in the picture to the right. You can see there's a spring that rolls over to the other side with levers that cause tension when they are laying on each other, and when the gopher comes out of its tunnel and taps the sensitive part of the trap, the trap will snap around its neck and kill it. This trap ranges between $15 and $20, and it is a good trap because it humanely kills the gopher and the spring creates an easy disposal of the carcass. Another trapping option is the gophinator, which is a bit of a cheaper option. It ranges at about $8. The only thing about this trap that is a little difficult is that after you've made your kill, the carcass is a little more difficult to dispose of. Next up is the Maccabee Gopher Trap, which retails at about $10. This trap is pretty similar to the Rodentinator and is another good option for trapping. And lastly is the Victor Black Box Gopher Trap. It retails at about $20, so it is a more expensive out of the four traps total. This trap is placed at the top of a gopher hole and the black box surrounding makes it a dark environment with a hole that's in the very back letting some sunlight in, representing the natural outside of the gopher mound. This trap is different from the last two traps because it does have an easier release of the carcass by simply pushing down on the lever and it will release the gopher. Exclusion is another good gopher management strategy because it works for both high and low densities of gopher populations that you have in your area. An exclusion can consist of, like the photo on the left, a mesh wire that could go around the base of your trees to protect the root system, or digging a trench, or even placing a mesh wire fence that could go underground and above ground to stop the gophers from coming into an area that you don't want them to be in. Another gopher management strategy that is out and for sale is gopher fumigants, but we know that fumigants are not successful for gopher extermination. This is due to the gopher's ability to tell that there is something in their tunnel and they could wall off that tunnel and the fumigant will never get to them or affect them. 
so we know that this is not a successful gopher management strategy. A strategy that is very effective for gopher management is toxic baiting. Baiting is done by using a gopher probe that is inserted into the soil to find the main tunnel that the gopher will run through. And inside that gopher probe, you will insert the gopher bait, which is grains that are coated in strychnine. These strychnine coated grains are basically irresistible to the gophers and they will practically die right as they eat them or shortly afterwards. This is good for high density populations of gophers that you have in your area. For very high density populations of gophers in your area, a method that could be used is flooding through irrigation into all openings of the gopher burrow system. And second, one that is really cool is the rodentinator, which retails at about $3,000. And what it does is you insert a pump into the gopher mound and the tank mix is oxygen gas and propane gas. After those gases are filled into the burrow system, you press a button on the rodentinator and it basically creates an explosion within the burrow system. This is to collapse the walls of all the tunnels that are built up and to concuss the gopher with the force of the explosion. You could tell the effectiveness by coming back to the area that you had just used the rodentinator in and look for any new activity. If there is any new activity, you can just go about this process once again until you have success. Along with these management tactics that we could perform in agriculture systems, there is also nature on our side. There are natural predators of gophers that consist of snakes, bobcats, coyotes, owls, raptors, herons, and cats. And these can help to control and maintain low gopher populations in your area.